strong Holds break in the blink of an eye Death and all our sin know where it's at For the Lord, He is alive See the lost return from the dead of the night Every captive free, every chin left behind Have you ever seen such a beautiful sight?
church with what we get to be a part of. There is nothing in this world like the presence of God. And when He is moving, no one can say a word against it. No one can hold back the purposes of God, yeah? We're about to sing a song that says, are you ready? Yeah. And you know, Pastor Brian's been preaching 2020 vision. We're about to hit on Vision Sunday. New dreams, new visions. Doesn't matter the age that we are. Come Holy Spirit, come on. In Psalm 113, it says, Hallelujah. 
You who serve God, praise God. That's us. You who serve God, praise God. Just to speak His Name is praise. So tonight when we get to free worship, which if you're new here, it's just when the music's playing, no one's singing anything, you can sing the Name of Jesus. Because just to speak His Name is praise. There's power in His Name, there's healing in the Name of Jesus. Just to remember God is a blessing now and tomorrow and always. From east to west, from dawn to dusk, keep lifting all your praises to God. And this is the bit. God is higher than anything and anyone. God is higher than anything and anyone. So no matter what you face tonight, or maybe there's someone where there's been a bit of friction, God is higher and He is above and He is bigger and nothing is impossible for God tonight. It says that He is outshining everything that you see in the skies. Who can pair with God our God? Did you understand that? God is higher than anything and anyone. So no matter what you feel like you're coming in here with, God is bigger. And He outshines everything that you see in the skies and the sun. It's 150 million kilometres away and yet we feel its warmth and God is bigger than the sun. God is bigger than anything that you could face. And yet I love that in Colossians 1 it says, and yet He is so spacious and roomy is He that everything and everyone, animals and atoms, find their place in Him. And even the broken and dislocated pieces, He fits together and He fixes. Is that an amen? No matter what we face, let's come before God and bring Him everything that we have. Because He's bigger than it all. And yet there's so much space and room for you tonight in the presence of God. Amen. Would you lift up your hands, church? Yeah. We lift up our hands in your presence, God. We thank you that you come close. That you're not a God who is just distant. You knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. And you are here among us now. Have your way, we say, with our hands raised, that we surrender. Move among us. Do what only you can do, God. We trust you tonight. Come, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.
before us, God. You want to change the lives of your people. God, I pray for every family represented. Lord, every marriage, every individual that happens to gather here. And Lord, those that may be streaming in right now on the channel. Lord, you're going to encounter people tonight. Lord, we want a revival tonight. Lord, we don't just want to go through another set of motions, God. We want an encounter with the Holy Spirit tonight. And we know He's here to change lives, God. So we thank you for all you're about to do. In Jesus' name. Everyone said together, amen, amen, amen. 
Well, welcome to Hillsong Church. Sunday night, an atmosphere where anything can happen and it possibly will. And it's already happening. Man, there's such a great revival atmosphere in the place. But in my hands here, I hold a prayer request, so many different needs. And uh, some of the needs will come behind me on the screen. But every week we take time out to pray for people in here. You've written in prayer requests and maybe on the channel as well. But just to give you a bit of an idea, over the past few weeks, even months, we've been praying as a church for rain. And how cool is it over the past few days, we've seen some good signs. And there's good signs of the bushfires dying down, but we're gonna keep praying for Australia. We're gonna keep lifting up our nation. But why don't you begin to stretch out your hands if you feel comfortable. There's needs behind me on the screen. So many different needs from healing to guidance, to provision, to finances, court cases, so many different needs. Come on, we're a praying church. We believe in a God who answers prayer. Father, we thank You that right now You're able to turn around the worst of situations. And so we bring every request before You. Lord, we thank You that You're a good God. And Lord, it is out of Your character that You do good. And so God, bring healing, bring deliverance, bring restoration. Lord, Lord, we pray for rain. We keep believing that it will keep getting to those places, God. Lord, where there's drought, where there's, Lord, things going on, Lord, with bushfires and everything. Father, we believe Lord, for turnaround in every single detail, in every situation, in Jesus' name. Come on, sing this one more time. Sing this one more time. Jesus, come on. You have no right. You have no right. there's always a praise report. And I was just reading through some of these, so many great praise report. God turning around situations. Uh, look, someone here thanking God, praising God for a lump in a family member's breast. It's completely gone. Great results happening there. And someone here thanking God for 36 years of marriage as well. So congrats Ramel, wherever you are right now. Absolutely amazing. And look, there's so many different praise reports for the rain, for the rain, for the rain, for the rain. It's just so good that God's answering prayers. And we're going to keep believing for it, okay? Let's keep praying for it. Let's keep believing for that. And uh, it's so good that you're in church. A big warm welcome again to Hillsong Church. My name's Peter. I'm one of the pastors here. If you're new or visiting, uh, feel right at home. Feel like you belong because you absolutely do. Uh, we have a sign out the front there. And it's our prayer, welcome home, that you do feel like you're at home. And so why don't we give those maybe new or visiting a big warm welcome. So good to have you. Why don't you take a moment right now to say hello to someone and uh, you can grab your seats. Maybe we can stay in this atmosphere of whatever you want it to be. <laughs> Were any of our young people at summer camps this week? We had our primary school age and our high school summer camps happen this year. And I gotta say, God turned up and He mightily moved in the lives of young people. And we thought 
we just kind of give you a little snippet uh, and a little glimpse into what took place this week. So we've got a few cool stories to share and I'm going to ask our wildlife senior high school youth pastor, Paul Kellaway. He's going to come up here and kind of give you insight to what took place this week. Would you welcome Paul and some of our students? Thank you, Togs. We've got a couple of our amazing young people here. We've got Barnabas and we've got Veronica as well. And like people were saying, we've had the most amazing few days at summer camp. So Veronica, let's start with you. What grade are you in? You're 10. And tell us a little bit about what God did. Oh, Ben, you made it. Ben, you are worth waiting for. Everyone, this is Ben. Ben was in the choir, so he just had to take a quick minute to warm his voice down so he could get up here. So Veronica, tell me a little bit about what God did in your life at summer camp this year. Well, before I have been ascending Hillsong, I was very insecure of what would happen in my life. And I just didn't really like to tell people about my problems because I didn't want them to feel the pain that I was going through. And ever since I've been attending this Hillsong, I've felt so different. It's been amazing. Uh, like during worship, it was like I could just let go of all my problems and just be with Jesus and my family. Awesome. How cool is that? And this is Barnabas and Ben. So boys, tell us a little bit about what God did in your life at camp. Okay, so um, so uh, it was on Thursday, uh, Wednesday um, morning, so at uh, the uh, Holy Spirit session. Um, and then it was uh, lungs preaching. And then um, uh, I put my hand up and, um, to, uh, and I received the Holy Spirit. And then um, I started, and then I started speaking in tongues for the first time in my life. And, and, then, um, uh, and then I invited uh, two of my friends, uh, who's uh, like the first time coming to this church. And then, um, oh yeah, and then, um, so uh, they came, it was the first time coming to church. Um, on the first day, on the first session, we said, um, oh, uh, uh, do you want to put your hand up uh, to see Jesus as your personal savior? And then uh, they said yes. And when it came to that time, so uh, they put up the hand up. They put the hand up, and then they received Jesus as their personal savior. And then, um, and then afterwards, uh, they came through the doors and they got their Bibles, their first Bibles. And then, um, yeah, and on, the, on Wednesday morning, we uh, asked them, uh, uh, with the, they uh, wanted to speak in, the, uh, in tongues. Um, one of them did, the other one, uh, yeah, he got the Holy Spirit, but the other one, uh, <laughs> Good job. he spoke in tongues. And then, um, and now um, one of the, the person who spoke in tongues, their mom is coming to this, is thinking of coming to this campus. So good. Church, can we take a moment? Can we appreciate Barnabas, Ben, and Veronica? Amazing. And hey, we wanted to take a moment and church, thank you guys. Uh, what an incredible week it was. And we had so many testimonies we could share. Hundreds upon hundreds of young people's lives being transformed. Young people being filled with the Holy Spirit. We're believing high schools to be transformed for Jesus. Homes to be transformed for Jesus. We're believing for clean bedrooms, clean kitchens and everything. And hey, also, if you sponsored a young person to be at summer camp, thank you so much. So many of our young people were able to be at summer camp this year because of your generosity. And you got to play a part in some incredible testimonies just like these guys. So come on, let's appreciate these guys one more time. So cool. Uh, you guys can grab your seats. We're going to continue in our worship right now. We're going to come around our giving. And I'm going to invite our junior high school pastor, Drew Mears, who's going to come and share around our giving. So would you welcome, Drew? Thank you, Tugs. Well, good evening, church. You can be seated. Uh, as you know, the ways in which you contribute are behind me on the screens. Um, and in advance, thank you so much for your generosity. I kind of want to, I want to share what has been probably the most beautiful moment in the Mears household of the last couple of months. My son of 21 months, Romeo Mears, he's adorable, and by no exaggeration, completely obsessed with his, with his, with his pacifier, his dummy. So right now, um, me and my wife, Virginia, we come up with a new plan every day of how to distract and then extract so we can avoid the tantrum. 
And uh, you know, parenting, like, it's great fun. Um, however, this one particular day, my daughter, Rosie, of four and a half months now, I don't know why, but for, for some reason, she just was not going to sleep. And to my surprise, Romeo jumps off the couch. This is a true story, by the way. Grabs a pacifier, this invaluable pacifier, out of his mouth, puts it in her mouth and he says, there, there, Rosie, you sleep now. He goes, there, there, you sleep now. Now I can tell you, and then he started patting her, it was more like beating, but that's okay. <laughs> he tried. I can tell you as a dad, it was one of the most generous, most beautiful things that I was so proud of my son at that moment. But it reminds me of the story in Mark 14, where the woman with the alabaster jar, she walks in and Jesus is sitting down and what she does is she, she pours a perfume all over his head. And those sitting around him, they, they started to ridicule her saying, do you realise how much that's worth? That's, it's over a year's wage. Obviously she has similar taste to my wife, but um, <laughs> stop it, stop it. But in verses six, this is what I want to focus in on. Jesus says, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? What she has done is a beautiful thing. What she has done is a beautiful thing. And here at Hillsong Church, as we come around our tithe and our offering and our giving, it has never been about obligation. It's never been about duty, but it has always been an act of beauty. So can I pray for you as we come around our giving right now? Jesus, Lord, I thank You so much that we can partner with You, that we can build Your church. And on the other side of this are lives and families and communities that are changed forever. In the mighty Name of Jesus, Amen. 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 If you can do two things at once, as the containers come around, you can turn your attention to the screens. You've got to love this time of the year. Summer camp, summer fest. January is just that season in our church and we've already had our primary school age and our high schoolers and this week is our young adults. Now, if you are anywhere between the ages of 18 to 35, you feel like anywhere between those ages. Listen, this week is gonna be a milestone week for the young adults of our church. What was known as the Frontline uh, um, you know, Summer Con and our Young Adults Powerhouse, we're kind of just bringing the strengths of both of that together and all our resource together and we're bringing it to Luna Park and we are gonna have the time of our lives this week. So listen, it's not too late to get registered. Uh, Kim Walker-Smith is gonna be with us this week as well, which is gonna be amazing and into the weekend. And so she's gonna be around. So next weekend is gonna be an amazing weekend. And while we are gearing up for the this year, uh, college. If you are uh, part of college, give us a yell out. I, I know college is about to, maybe you're returning students or uh, maybe you've just been away and, or maybe you're coming for the first time. Big warm welcome uh, to Australia. But I wanna say this, you know, I think young people especially, you know, this time of the year where everyone's thinking about decisions and what this next season, what this next decade is gonna look like. Why not put Bible college right at the beginning of your life in terms of building biblical foundation to which you're gonna make some decisions from and how cool would it be to make those decisions from that place of where you've built strong, godly principles in your life, taking one, two year, three year college uh, uh, years out to really invest that and give it to God. And um, if you're an Australian student, if you're an Australian citizen, you know, we don't want any obstacles for any of our young Australians. And so this year, what we have done is we have pre-payment uh, plans for you, uh, for anyone who's an Australian citizen to make it easy for you to be a part of college. So listen, come and start a conversation out in the foyer and you never know where you could end up. It's not too late to get, be a part of uh, Hillsong College. Speaking of Hillsong College, our Executive Vice Principal, President, EVP we like to call him, Pastor Lee Burns is bringing the Word tonight. So why don't we stand together, let's honour the Word of God, and let's thank Lee Burns as he comes to preach tonight. Hey, good evening church, how are you all? Thank you, bro. Ah, you guys are absolutely legendary. Turn to the person next to you and tell them you are a legend. <laughs> and you may be seated. Thank you, band. <clears throat> I 
How many of you have been on camp already? Hey, unbelievable. How many of you were leaders on camp this week? Ah, you guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do for our children. They are absolutely phenomenal. My boys are always blessed by summer camp. One of them is now leading Fuel, which is even better, right? It's, it's kind of cool. And uh, man, I just love what summer camps do, do to our church, do for our young people. I don't think anything can beat summer camp. Getting into His presence, experiencing His presence. I always tell our college, you can't spend five minutes in His presence and not walk away changed. It's, uh, it's absolutely amazing. So thank you for all you guys do. You're phenomenal. How are you guys up the back tonight? Yeah, you're in the heavenly realms, the Bible calls that. And uh, absolutely amazing, seated in heavenly realms. I want to speak to you tonight on a subject called Fueled and a Flame. Fueled and a Flame. If you want a subtitle for it, it's simply Praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. Pastor Brian came into this year talking about the Holy Spirit. So I thought I would just piggyback off the back of what our leaders are doing and share some things tonight when it comes to praying in the Spirit. Praying's not difficult. It's not hard. Someone once asked Yongi Cho's wife, Yongi, Pastor Yongi Cho run a huge church in Seoul, Korea, and some, somewhere around a million people. And they asked his wife one time, because they're prayer warriors, how do you pray? And she said, open mouth and speak. <laughs> That's it. Isn't it funny that the most powerful things in life are often the most simple things in life? That we go after all these amazing revelations, we want to have these amazing experiences, which we should do. And I believe in all of that. But sometimes it's as simple as open mouth, speak. Paul says to the Thessalonians, he says this in verse 13. I'm going to speak from the, the message and then we'll come back to the NIV in a moment. But he says this in the uh, message paraphrase. It says, get along among yourselves, each of you doing your part. And a little bit down, he says, be patient with each person attentive to individual needs and be careful when you get on each other's nerves. And see that? Be careful when you get on each other's nerves. Notice that. It doesn't say if you get on people's nerves. It says when. When you get on others' nerves. Be careful that you don't snap at each other. Look for the best in each other and always do your best to bring it out. Be cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. How many are under conviction already? Be cheerful no matter what. Smile at the person next to you. Come on, give them a smile, church. Give them a smile. Tell them amazing teeth. Be cheerful no matter what. Look at this next one, pray all the time. Thank God, no matter what happens, this is the way God wants you who belong in Christ Jesus to live. That's what Paul says to the Thessalonians. He basically says to get along well with others, you need to pray. So that others don't get on your nerves, you need to pray. To function healthy as a community, we need to pray. That's the Thessalonians. Let's see what he says to the Romans. It says here in verse nine, love from the center of who you are, don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. I love that. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Notice that, you're not number one. There's only one number one in the kingdom of God and his name is? Jesus. Amen. Look, look at this next bit. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. 
Be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times, pray all the harder. Help needy Christians, be inventive in hospitality. Bless your enemies, no cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. That's twice Paul said that now. Don't be stuck up. Then the person next to you said, oh my God, that was so for you. <laughs> Look at this next bit. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. Whether it's the Thessalonians, the Romans, the Corinthians, the Galatians, the Ephesians, the Philippians, Paul takes time out always in his letters to remind us that prayer only builds us. That praying in the Spirit keeps us alert to all that God is doing. It's like Paul saying, you're gonna have issues with other people around you. Uh, that, that's fine, that's fine. But if you'll pray for them, you'll see another perspective. It's like Paul says, hey, sometimes in life we're gonna live down here, but if you'll pray, you'll see things from up here. I remember sitting at a table one time with a pilot and I said to the pilot, I said, tell me about the jet stream. There's this thing called a jet stream that aeroplanes get into. And he began to tell me that 27,000 feet above the earth, there's an airstream that goes from east to west. And the airstream is caused from the rotation of the earth. And if an aeroplane can get up into that jet stream, it can cut down the resistance and improve the momentum of the flight. And scientists begin to discover this in the late 30s, early 40s, that in 1952, a Pan Am flight from Tokyo to Honolulu flew not at 20,000 feet, but at 28,000 feet, the first plane to get into this jet stream. And it cut the flying time down from 18 hours to 11 and a half hours. You see, I believe, church, that there is a spiritual jet stream, that when we can get up into that spiritual jet stream, all of a sudden resistance is so much less, but momentum is so much greater. I believe that when we pray in the Spirit, that what you think is problems down here is answers up here. That what you think is impossible becomes possible. You see, I believe that there's people in this room tonight that at the end of tonight, when we begin to pray in the Spirit, God's gonna lift you from 20,000 feet up to 28,000 feet, 30,000 feet, and you're gonna see things from a whole different perspective. You see, praying in the Spirit will change the way you see others. Praying in the Spirit will change the way you see yourself. Praying in the Spirit will change the way you see God. Praying in the Spirit will change the way you see the church. But church, we're all called to pray in the Spirit. Paul says to the Ephesians, check this out, I love the book of Ephesians. It's my favourite book in the Bible. It says this to the Ephesians in verse 18. This is after coming through the, the warfare passage of Ephesians 6, talking about the armour of God. He says this, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, notice this, be alert. What is praying in the Spirit gonna do? It's gonna keep you alert to what the enemy is gonna try and do in your life. And always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words will be given me so that I may uh, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel or boldly make known is another translation for which I am the ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Notice here in Ephesians chapter six, that Paul sees prayer not as a de defensive weapon of when it's all coming against you, you know, God help. And we all do the God help prayers. But Paul's letting us know that, that prayer can also be a def uh, an offensive weapon. 
that you can actually have the enemy on the back foot rather than you be on the back foot. That if you'll pray, you'll begin to collect momentum or gain momentum in your spiritual walk. Be alert and keep watch. Another passage of Scripture, which is one of my favourites that I found in Bible college in 1997. This one changed my life. Check this out. In verse 8, uh, chapter 8, sorry, Romans 8, 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We don't know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Notice that, that the Spirit helps us when? In our time of weakness. When you don't know how to pray, the Spirit can pray through you. When you don't know what to pray, the Spirit can pray through you. You see, praying in the Spirit, I believe, is so important for us as a church. I believe that as we continue to go forward into 2020 and all that God has for praying in the Spirit has to become something that we do on a daily basis. Martin Luther said this, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than being alive without breathing. To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than being alive without breathing. And Martin Luther also said this, pray and let God worry. How cool is that? Pray and let God worry. Or as Veronica says, let go of your problems. Even better. But either way, when we pray, problems turn into possibilities. Problems that seem so huge become so small. So tonight I wanna to speak on five reasons why we need to pray in the Spirit. Five reasons why we need to be fueled and aflamed, going into all that God has for us to see His kingdom established and extended here on earth, amen? Is everyone good? Amen, we're not gonna get strange or weird or anything like that. I tell our college all the time that people that are weird with the Holy Spirit were usually weird before they had the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit that's the problem, amen? Amen. We're meant to experience God. We're meant to experience His presence. Sometimes people will say, you Pentecostals, you build your doctrines out of your experiences. Don't worry about that. Those people build their doctrines out of their non-experience. Now, I would rather experience God than not experience God. I would rather experience the fullness of God and all that He has for us. Man, it... it, it it alit the early church. Man, they begin to experience miracles in community like they'd never seen before. They had this radical value for people over possessions all of a sudden. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you're gonna experience God. His presence is gonna overwhelm you. It's gonna transform you. It's gonna change you, amen? Don't be scared to experience the presence of God. Five reasons why we need to pray in the Spirit tonight. Number one. Number one, it will develop the mind of Christ in you. It will develop the mind of Christ in you. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, he says, let this attitude be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Let this attitude be in you that is in Christ Jesus. And he goes on and he talks about how Jesus focused more on others than he did himself. And Paul's saying, let, let that attitude, let that attitude be in you. You ever notice the more you hang around people, the more you become like them? I play this game when I drive because I'm always the best driver on the road at the time. But I play this game and it usually when we're driving long distances and when the kids were much smaller, you know, we'd give them drinks for the journey and they'd have them all drunk in five minutes. And you'd be like, oh man, that was like a liter of water. It's gonna be a long journey and I bet we're gonna have to stop halfway. So it kind of makes me wanna get going straight away so that we don't have to stop. Because if we have to stop, then all the traffic that I overtook on the way is gonna overtake me. And I actually think as they overtake me, they give me a look like, <laughs> look at us going, going past you now. And so I'm more determined to make sure that we don't have to stop. So, and so we're, we're, we're going on holidays one time and, and Cherie and I, we'll just silent, complete silence in the car. And Cherie turns to me and she goes, 
Are you winning? <laughs> How does she know what I'm thinking? I didn't say anything, I wasn't fidgeting, I was just silent, focused on, you know, the Formula One driving that I do at the speed limit. And Cherie, did you win? Are you winning? You see, the more you hang out with someone, the more you begin to develop their way of thinking. The more you hang out with Jesus, church, the more you begin to think the way He thinks, the more you begin to see things the way He sees things. Smith Wigglesworth says this, one of the great healing evangelists last century, he says this, I never pray longer than 30 minutes. Some of you in the room are like, oh, thank God for that. (laughs) I never pray longer than 30 minutes. Then he said, but I never go 30 minutes without praying. I love that. You see, prayer is not difficult, it's simply communication. The way you communicate with God is gonna be the way I, uh, is gonna be different than the way I communicate with God. Some people, they're just prayer warriors, they can pray for four hours, unbelievable, brilliant. Smith Wigglesworth, no longer than 30 minutes, but not 30 minutes without acknowledging the Lord. But sometimes church, we, get confused on how to pray, what to pray. And this is where I believe the Spirit helps us in our time of weakness. You see, when I come home from work of an afternoon and I walk into the house and see Cherie, I'm not sitting there thinking, oh God, how am I gonna speak to Cherie? (laughs) Will I do the, oh Cherie, you are Cherie. And Cherie, by the way, your name is Cherie. And Cherie, (laughs) I love you, Cherie. And I pray, Cherie, that Cherie, you will... Cherie would look back at me and go, I know my name. (laughs) Jesus sometimes looks back, I know I'm Lord God. Uh, What do you want? (laughs) I sit down and I talk to Cherie and then I listen and listen. It's a gift. There's a guy in the 1700s, his name was Brother Lawrence. He's got this little book out, it's called Practicing the Presence of God. And I would encourage all the church to buy it. I remember years ago buying it at Kurong for $2. It's a little booklet, it's about 50 pages. But in it, Brother Lawrence is talking to a young disciple of his and he's teaching him to walk around with his head engaged in Christ, with his head engaged on the things of God. And a few hundred years later, a man by the name of John G. Lake picked up this book and he began to read it. And, and, and John G. Lake records how he said, for nine months I walked around talking to the Holy Spirit like He was right there. And he said, after nine months I realised He was. You see, there's gonna be moments, church, where you just need to practise the presence of God. It doesn't mean an hour in prayer. It can be two minutes in prayer. Father, I don't know what's going on right now, but I know there's an answer. You see, the way you communicate with God is not the same way the person next to you is gonna communicate with God. The way my sons talk to Cherie is not the same way that I talk to Cherie. We all communicate differently. And the way you communicate with God is most important. Doesn't matter how you communicate, it matters that you communicate, amen? Amen, so don't worry about which prayer, how to pray or anything like that. Do I pray the the prayer of faith? Hey, when you pray, you are praying the prayer of faith, amen? And so just pray and it will develop the mind of Christ in you. Number two, not only will it develop the mind of Christ in you, it will empower you. We live in a world that wants to disempower everybody, but we live with a God that wants to empower you with His Holy Spirit. You see, as I said earlier, the Apostle Paul talked about praying in the Spirit on all occasions, in all different situations. Pray in the Spirit. And when we pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, it's like, remember years ago, they're probably still around, there were these car games that you would get into and you would change the gears and everything like that and had a clutch, accelerator, brake, and, and you would go through and there'd be like, 
towers or, or, or road, uh, sorry, buildings coming at you on the road. And there was an oil slick, a rock, and all of these things that you had to navigate yourself around from down here, looking at it all coming to you. But after you got a few points up your sleeve, you could hit a button and it would pull you back and show you the whole road and all the bends and obstacles coming up. You see, when you pray in the Spirit Church, it takes you from down here where obstacles are coming at you to up here where you begin to see the obstacles from a whole different perspective. And you sit there knowing they're coming, but then you navigate with wisdom around them. You navigate with wisdom through them. You see, praying in the Spirit will empower you to go from what seems like a problem to a possibility. When we pray in the Spirit, we will always walk away more stronger than before we started to pray. Number three, not only will it develop the mind of Christ in you, not only will it empower you, but number three tonight, it will build godly conviction. Praying in the Spirit will help you build godly conviction. What is conviction? It's the engine room of your life. It's the engine room of your life. It's determines what you say yes to, what you say no to. Sometimes we get ourselves so confused over what to say yes to, what to say no to. Hey, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit and you will know what to say yes to, what to say no to. Because again, the more you hang out with Him, the more you'll begin to develop that conviction within you, that engine room within you to see the Kingdom of God go forward rather than your life go backwards. It'll help build Godly conviction. Paul said to the Corinthians, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. I just wanna say, just because the world says it's right doesn't mean it's right. Does God say it's right? If God says it's right, it's right. Build your conviction around that. Years ago when I was in college in 1997, we had a hot day and a group of us decided to go down to the pool. And as we're going into the pool, back then I haven't been there for a while, but it, it could be still the same, but there was a turnstile. It was like three prongs that come out. You put your $2 in and you walk through it. Well, Sanger puts his $2 in and walks through and heads on over to the pool. And I was about to put my $2 in and the guy behind me goes, hey, Lee, 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 wait till the guy here goes over and serves those people at the canteen. And when he does that, put your $2 in, I'll stay really close behind you and we'll work, walk through the turnstile together. And I turned to him, I said, bro, are you kidding me? I said, I will give you the $2 rather than rub the pool of the $2. I said, not only that, but what is your integrity and character worth? $2. We're training to be ministers of the truth and we're prepared to rub a pool of two dollars. Two bucks. Now some of you in the room will go, it's only two dollars. Hey, it, it all started with only an apple. And an apple's a lot healthier, but when God says don't, Two bucks, two bucks. You're gonna sell out your character and integrity for two bucks? Pray in the Spirit and you will build godly conviction. Every college student, write that down. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> Tell the person next to you, oh my gosh, that was so for you. <laughs> Build them up in the most holy faith. Bring a little rebuke, a little conviction. <laughs> it will develop, it will empower, it will build. Number four, it will grow your confidence. It will grow your godly confidence. Like I said, you can't spend five minutes with God and not walk away changed. Smith Wigglesworth said, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by what I believe. I love that, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by what I believe. Church, what, what would it take to move you? 
What are you moved by? I believe that going into 2020, as we continue to build strong, godly conviction, that we'll continue to see the enemy push back and the kingdom of God continue to go forward. But we're gonna grow in our confidence on how to use the weapons of our warfare. We're gonna learn to spit, not spit, 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 but not spit. Don't, just in case someone just spat, he said said it. No, no, to spit arrows back at the enemy that when we pray in the Spirit, it's like firing arrows over enemy lines. Rather than be defensive on the back foot, get on the offensive and continue to gain momentum and see the kingdom expanded. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by what I believe. I remember Smith Wigglesworth said that the only book he ever read was the Bible. Now he only learned to read when he was 48, just to let you know. But all he ever read was the Bible and he made this statement that if all that goes in me is the Bible, then all that will come out of me is the Bible. Young people, what are you putting in you? Because what you put in is gonna come out. Put the Word of God into you, the Word of God will come out of you. Put godly things into you, godly things will come out of you, amen? Continue to grow in your confidence. A few years ago, Pastor Bobby gave me a gift. She gave me cologne. (laughs) You really need this, Lee. (laughs) Like the Word of God, apply it daily. (laughs) She gave me this bottle of cologne and I wore it for about 10 months and I was going uh, to visit a church and I thought, I'm gonna get the, the pastor a gift. I'm gonna get him this cologne because it was really cool. It was in a great bottle. It was a cool color, smelled awesome. And so I went to the duty free section of the, the airport and, and I went over to the man section and I said, hey, where would I find this cologne? And he said, oh, you won't find that here. It's, it's, it's over in the ladies section. I said, no, no, it's not in the ladies section. I said, it's a man's cologne. And, and he said, no, 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 that's actually not a man's cologne, that's a lady's perfume. And if you look over there and he pointed over and there was a lady model, you know, modeling above the stand with all of this stuff. And I said, this cannot be true. I cannot be wearing ladies' perfume. I've been wearing it for 10 months. <laughs> he said, I don't know how to tell you, but that is not man's cologne, that is ladies' perfume. So when I come home from the trip, I said, Pastor Bobby, that that cologne you gave me 10 months ago, it wasn't cologne, it was actually perfume. And she said, oh, I must've got them mixed up. (laughs) I've been wearing this stuff for 10 months. Hey, don't let perfume take away your confidence. When you pray in the Spirit, you will get a godly confidence that it doesn't matter what perfume you wear, you know you're a great man of God all the more. Praying in the Spirit will grow your confidence. Number five. (laughs) Praying in the Spirit, number five, will cultivate your spiritual sensitivity. As Paul says on a number of occasions, pray and stay alert or pray and keep watch. The whole idea is a person in a city in an elevated tower keeping watch on his enemy. You see, when you pray in the Spirit, Spirit takes you up so that you can become more aware of what's going on around you. You can become more aware of the enemy's tactics that are gonna try and take you out. I actually had tonight, for this point, it'll cultivate your spiritual sensitivity. I actually had it'll cultivate your spiritual simplicity. Because I actually believe that some of the most powerful things in Christianity are so simple. You wanna see people's lives built around you? Encourage them. Speak words of life into them. Don't talk about them behind their back. I know, they're like so simple. But why are the basics so difficult? Why are the things that are so powerful that would see the church rise and lift to be all that she's called to be on the earth, that the world would see the church and go, I don't know what's happening there, but I wanna be a part of it. Those people, they're so happy. They're so encouraging. They're so strengthening. They're so, and, and, and all of a sudden, the simple things have become the most powerful things in our lives. I'll get the band to come up and join me. 
But a few years ago when I first got saved, we got saved on a Sunday and at the end of the night when we kind of went through the, the new Christians, a couple of the pastors said to us, hey, if you want to, we're doing a prayer meeting this Tuesday night up on this hill. And I said, oh, definitely, I'll come, I'll come along to it. I didn't know what prayer was. I didn't know how to pray. I just thought if they're going, I'll go and be a part of that. And there was a, two of us that turned up that had just given our hearts to the Lord on the Sunday and here we are on the Tuesday night. Now, the, the other guy that I was with, was, he was quite a rough looking dude. And so we're going around the circle praying for the city, praying for our nation, praying for the church. And there are a lot of words that I didn't understand like sanctification and glorification, salvation, all these big words that I'm like, okay, I don't know how, what they mean. So I'm probably not gonna let those ones out. But the, they come around to me and I, I was hoping that they'd realise that I'd just give my heart to the Lord. I hadn't spoken to Him yet. They'd let me out of the prayer. And so it came to me and the guy next to me just gave me a bump and I was like, oh, all right, I'm in. And so I did what everyone does. I stepped in the middle. I said, God, thank you for your church. And everyone said, amen. And I was like, oh, did it. <laughs> and I bumped the guy next to me. This guy's rough and he just steps in the middle. Tears are rolling down his eyes. And he looks up to heaven. He says, God, F, I love you. <laughs> How to open eyes in a prayer meeting. Everyone was like, oh. <laughs> the tears rolling down his eyes. Couldn't believe that God's hand of grace would reach out to him, that his love would reach out to him. He was experiencing God at a whole nother level. I'm gonna be honest with you, church, looking back on that situation, I honestly think God looked down from heaven and went, love you too, bro. I actually wonder whether it was that prayer that got God's attention the most. Now church, I'm not saying drop a bomb in the middle of the prayer meeting. Oh, in Newcastle, we speak in those tongues. But prayer is not difficult, church, but it's so powerful. Prayer can be so simple and so powerful. And I believe, church, as we continue to pray in the Spirit, that we'll continue to see what all that God is calling us into in 2020 for your life personally and for us as a church. I'm gonna ask you all to stand in this place tonight. Did you receive the Word tonight? Amen. Amen. Fueled and aflamed, praying, in the Spirit. Here's what we're gonna do tonight, church. Just as the band plays softly, I'm gonna ask everyone just to raise their hands right across the auditorium. We usually say, if you're comfortable, raise your hands. Sometimes things in the Kingdom of God are not always that comfortable. And you're around other believers, so raise your hands in this place. For some of you, when we talk about praying in the Spirit, it's gonna mean speaking in other tongues. For some of you, praying in the Spirit, it doesn't have to be speaking in other tongues. It can be speaking in your native language, but thanking God, praising God, singing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, Paul says. It doesn't matter how it is, which tool you use to pray, but what matters is that we pray. And church, I'm gonna ask you just to raise your hands in this place. Let's all begin to pray. Let's all begin to praise God. Let's all begin to thank Him. Let's all begin to pray in the Spirit. As God continues to lift us from 20,000 feet into 2,700 feet, 27,000 feet. I believe that as we pray, keep praying church, as we pray, God's gonna to begin to show what seems like a problem, a possibility. What seems like impossible, possible. God's gonna begin to show you things from a whole different perspective. Challenges from a whole different perspective. Obstacles from a whole different perspective. You come in here asking for answers. God, you're gonna walk out knowing the answers tonight. Come on church, pray in the Spirit. Let's pray in the Spirit. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing right now. Thank you, Lord, that you're showing people problems. Thank you, Lord. Come on, church, pray. Come on, church, pray. Don't stay silent. Pray tonight. Pray in the Spirit. Watch what God begins to show you. Thank you, Lord. Man, just with no one moving around in this atmosphere of worship, man, man, God's in the place and He's speaking to people right now. The truth is, I pray you'd understand this. What a great message that was. God wants to connect with people. God values, He loves people. And guess what? God loves you. 
Whoever you are in this place, no matter what your background, no matter what your past, God loves you. See, God has a plan and a purpose for not just some people. He's got a plan and purpose for everyone because He created you. He is the Father. He is the God of gods. He is the King of kings and He created you for a purpose and a plan to bring Him glory. You see, I don't know how you came to be in this place today, but maybe you've walked in here with kind of an idea of what God's about. Maybe that idea has been painted over time by society and maybe some of the, you know, maybe some of your religious experience growing up. And maybe you think God's angry at you and He's out to judge and condemn you. But I would tell you right now that God loves you so much. You know how I know? Because one of the greatest Scriptures of all time, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that He gave. He gave His one and only Son. In other words, He gave His best, His Son Jesus to die for each and every one of us because why? He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And it is no accident, whether you're watching online or whether you happen to be in this building or in the parenting rooms, it is no accident that you happen to be in this place It is by the divine appointment. Maybe you came with a friend or a family member. Maybe you just found yourself in church, but it is no accident that you're here. God loves you so much. He has a plan and purpose for your life. And I don't know what you heard about God, but God is not just about religion. God is not about rules and regulation. He is into connecting with you. He's into relationship, which is what we're hearing about today. He wants to talk to you and for you to talk to Him. It is about a relationship. And maybe society has painted a picture that you've got to fix yourself before you get anywhere near God. But God is that good. He fixed it 2,000 years ago when He sent His best, His Son Jesus, for each and every one of us. And you know, all we need to do is simple, as Lee Burns said. It's simple. All you need to do, it starts with a simple prayer, a powerful prayer, a decision of saying, you know what? I need Jesus. I need this person you're talking about. Maybe you've never made this decision. Well, tonight, friend, I invite you to make this decision. I would love the honour, the opportunity to lead you in this simple, powerful prayer of asking Jesus into your life. Maybe you prayed this prayer at one point, but you know in your heart you walked away. The good news is, because He is that good, He never walked away from you. Your bad, my bad is no match for His good. He loves you so much. So every man, every woman, from the youngest to the oldest, front to the back, left to the right, whoever you are, my question is this, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour? Have you prayed a prayer? Have you accepted Him into your life? I'm not asking, do you go to church? I'm not asking you, do you read your Bible? No, I'm asking you, have you made a decision to follow Jesus? Have you prayed a simple prayer of asking Him into your life, of a prayer of surrender? Because friend, if you haven't, I would love to lead you wherever you stand right now. Can I have every head bowed, every eye closed all over this place? And if you're saying, yeah, Peter, would you lead me in this prayer, this simple prayer? Friend, the truth is this, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. And you might have walked in here feeling like, how can God accept me? He knows everything I've done. And you know what? He He does. And still He accepts you and still He loves you. And maybe today, each and every one of us need to consider where we're at. And if you're saying, yeah, Peter, Would you lead me in this prayer you're about to pray? What I'm going to do, while no one's looking around, I'm going to count to three. When I get to three and you're saying, yeah, would you lead me in this prayer? I want you to raise your hand high enough and long enough for me to see it. Maybe at one time you made this decision, but you know in your heart you've walked away. Well, friend, this is for you as well. Whoever you are all over this place, are you ready? All over this place, this is for every person. While every believer is praying for this moment, come on, why don't we believe that people are going to give their life to Jesus from the youngest to the oldest? Are you ready? One. Don't leave it a day longer, friend. Two, today is the day of salvation. Decide, decide, decide. You're gonna surrender your life to Jesus. Three, all over this place. Raise your hands right now. All over this place, hands going up throughout the building. Many hands, many hands. I can see them, I can see them. Yeah, hands being raised throughout the back there. Beautiful, beautiful. Anyone else, anyone else wanna join these people? Awesome, yeah, thank you. I saw that hand down here in the middle. Anyone else throughout the back? Come on, let's believe for this moment. I'll just give this a few more moments. Beautiful, people are responding to the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. You can put your hands down. Church, can we give these people a massive round of applause? I saw hands raised and in a room like this, you can't see every hand. This is what I'm gonna ask you to do. In a moment, the team are gonna begin to lead us in worship. 
And if you raised your hands just then, what I want you to do is I want you to take a bold step right now. I want you to grab your belongings, come with a friend or a family member, whoever it is you feel comfortable with. And I want you to leave where you're sitting and I want you to walk down the front here, whether there's one of you or whether there's many of you. We well, you know what we're gonna do is we're not gonna just watch, we're gonna congratulate and we're gonna applaud every single person. Maybe you didn't raise your hand, but you know you should have. This is for you as well. So just leave where you're seating. Come on team, lead us in worship right now. And as you begin to come down the front, there were hands up here, hands through here. We don't want to embarrass you. We want you to come down the front. We want to celebrate with you. So come on. Come on, come on. Even if you didn't raise your hands, come on, keep walking down the front. Yeah. Come on, keep singing, church. Beautiful, beautiful. Come down the front. How many moves make no mistake? Yeah. The clouds of hell begin to shake. Oh, hell, the light. and congratulate. Whether you came down the front, whether you didn't, you know what? The important thing is this, God sees your heart and He sees that you want a new beginning. He sees that you want to surrender your life to Him. This is what we're going to do. I'm just simply going to lead you in a prayer. And don't worry, you're not going to pray by yourself. We're all going to pray this prayer together. And it's not too late to come down the front if you feel to do so. But I want you to say this prayer after me. And as one big church family, say this prayer together from the bottom of your heart. Dear Jesus, Today is a brand new day. I give you my life. I surrender all. Would you forgive me of all my wrongdoing? I choose you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Come on, church. Beautiful. Oh, come on, we can do better than that. People giving their lives to Jesus. Listen, this is what we're going to do. Uh, I've got some of our team here. And whether you came up the front or not, this is, the, this is the important thing is that there's people that want to give you a Bible. It's a gift on behalf of our church to mark this day where you decided to follow Jesus. And I'm going to give this to this young man right here to mark this day. So well done, bro. Congratulations. But so cool. And listen, if you didn't come down the front, when you walk out, um, people are going to be waving that Bible around. Walk up to them and say, hey, I prayed that prayer at the end. Can I get one of those Bibles? They would love to put a Bible in your hand to bless you on this day you decided to follow Jesus. So one more time, church. Come on, let's congratulate everyone. Someone's going to have a little conversation with you, but you guys can hang down here. It's all good. What a word from Pastor Lee Burns. Can we thank Lee Beautiful, so practical and um, so needed for each and every one of us. 
when it comes to our prayer life, that encouraged me so much and practical and just reminding me of the power of praying in the Spirit. And so one more time, come on, let's really thank Lee Burns. Thank you, mate. So good. Hey, in a moment, I'm about to close uh, the service, but I wanted to remind you in a few weeks, Vision Sunday is on the way. This is an exciting time of the year where we gear up as a church. And I know many of you are returning back from holidays and everything like that, but we are gearing up for the best year of our life in 2020. And if you don't know what Vision Sunday is about, it's where our senior pastors roll out the ongoing vision of our church, short film presentation. And it comes in kind of a parts and series. On Sunday during the weekend, we capture the heart of where our church is headed. Tuesday night, heart and soul. It's a big celebration, but get all the details. I just wanted you to make sure you save the date, all right? It's on the way and only a few short weeks away. But hey, I'm gonna pray for you. And then it would only be right if we have a little bit of a praise and worship party, sing some new songs. Listen, you can go, you're more than welcome to uh, go and collect your young people, your kids. Uh, But if you wanna hang around, it's school holidays still, hang around. We're gonna keep pursuing the presence of the Lord. And so I'm gonna pray for you and then you're more than welcome to go or you can hang around, but let me pray for you. Father, thank You that You love us so much. Lord, thank You for the Word that was powerfully preached, God, that You wanna connect with us. And Lord, I pray for every individual, Lord, every marriage, every family as they go about their week, Lord, that You would be with them, that You would go before them, protect them, watch over them, provide for them, Lord, only You know what's really going on in families. Only You know what's going on in people's lives. And I pray those still believing for breakthrough, Lord, that this would be that week of turnaround and change. In Jesus' Name I pray. And everyone said together, Amen, Amen. Kim Walker-Smith in church next week. We'll see you next weekend. All right, church, let's go out with a song of praise. Sing it. Call the sing. There's a song that stirs the spirit and it calls the heart to life. It's an anthem in the making. Can you feel it start to rise? Can you hear the generations getting louder over time? Every son and every daughter singing out into the night. It's our time to be silent. Don't you dare hide your life. There's a world outside your window. So don't let it pass you by. Lift your hands. Let his name be lifted high And we all sing From the faithless to the faceless From the palace to the streets I can feel that drum beat pulsing And it's calling Every tribe and every nation singing Jesus. Lift it up! It's not
This is my favorite part. See the world light up one heart at a time. See the strong holds break in the blink of an eye. Death and all our sin, nowhere is safe. For the Lord, He is alive. See the lost return from the dead of the night. Every cat did free, every chain left behind. Have you ever seen such a beautiful sight? Come on, proclaim it to you. See the world light up one heart at a time. See the storm pours break in the blink of an eye. Telling all I see, no way inside for the Lord.
She's me.